So I guess it was only a matter of time. I'm going to be honest with you because everybody's noticing it. Every single political commentator in America, every single one of them knows this. That if you do not step out and say things that are radically pro-Israel, or if you are too quiet on certain narratives and they want you to be radically pro-Israel, you can lose everything. That's truth. That is a fact. I'm not, I'm not feeling like I need to hide from that anymore because, or be afraid to say it rather is a better way to say it because I've endured this for years. I'm just at the end of my rope. I've, I have given so much rope here and I am, I am team it. God. Okay. I'm team God. I do not fear the media. I do not fear journalists. I do not fear APAC. I don't fear big pharma. What I actually fear is God. I think that one day we are all going to have to account for the things that we have done and the things that we have said. And I want to make sure that I am not a person that is parroting lies. The fear of losing your job, encouraging some people to spit out lies, I don't think that works in the end. Right? I think you, you've got to check. King is king of the universe. But when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews. You are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. You are quoting scripture to your people. Uh, and then the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this has been disgraceful. Without a doubt. I think it's not true. I showed you that montage to kind of like, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, make you think that, I don't know, maybe that uh, Candace Owens getting fired from the Daily Wire was something that, quite frankly, we saw coming from a mile away. But the truth be told is this here. We saw it come from a mile away. Now, guys, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a very long time, then you already know how I feel about Candace. Candace has recently been winning me back a lot more recently, but of course, because she has certain takes, obviously, with a, let's just say, working for a platform that was built around Ben Shapiro, obviously, she was eventually going to get fired. However, I want to go ahead and say this before we go further. Candace seems to be taking this actually pretty well, a lot better than I thought she would take it. So I want to go ahead and lay out exactly how this video is going to go and why it was I did not post it the minute that it happened. Well, the reason why I didn't post it the minute that it happened was because I wanted to give you guys an overall much, much more thorough analysis. And of course, I also wanted to wait until today. I wanted to wait to see what Matt Walsh and what Ben Shapiro were going to say, but I may pick back up on that on Wednesday because I'm also gathering some more information on the whole uh, Moscow attack situation. Of course, we don't want to report during the fog of war, and we don't want to discuss this during the fog of war. And now I think we have a good grasp on what exactly is going on. So Candace has been feuding with this guy here that I'm showing you guys here in the B-roll footage, Rabbi Shmuley. Now, obviously, because of the nature of this content, seeing how it is that YouTube already found a way to demonetize or at least put limit the ads, on the first video of the day, it's in the review process. Obviously, I got to be a little bit more, let's just say, I got to try to thread the needle a little bit tighter than normal. So if things sound a little bit odd for my normal content, there's a reason for it. I'm not doing this, by the way, to insult one side of the aisle or another. Most of you guys who've been on my channel from the very beginning know that I am, in fact, one of the good old-fashioned traditional Christian pro-Israel types. However, I still like Candace, I still like Tucker, and of course, they are a lot more America first than I am, at least they appear to be. The thing is this right here. I think this entire situation could be solved with us helping Israel out by just simply putting a carrier group out there to kind of referee it and keep it a, a fight between two parties rather than sending any additional resources. I think I've been pretty daggone consistent, but I'm going to be bringing that up in this video as well because there's a lot of inconsistencies from the other side, especially the Free Palestine crowd, and I do have one criticism of Candace, uh, which will be coming a little bit later on the video. But obviously, I'm here to criticize the Daily Wire, as you guys can obviously see. I think that they're the ones who are at fault for what happened in this situation. But still, though, we got to talk about how it was that we got here. We're also going to talk about why the Daily Wire is at fault. And we're also going to be talking about not only that, but what happens to Candace Owens going forward. So make sure you guys stick around for the full video. Candace has been going at it with this guy for a while. Let me go ahead and play the first part of this. And of course, I'll be giving you guys more of an explanation of exactly how we got here, where it is that she's correct at uh, in this little fight or this little ordeal with this guy. Very small segment. Then we'll get to the bigger segment afterwards. But Gosh, let's go ahead. Shmooly. Woo!
things are really heating up. Let me just bring you guys forward on everything that has transpired. So way back when everything was going down with Kanye West two years ago, obviously two years ago, a very long time ago, uh, relative to just the political moment, um, I declined to publicly insult my friend. Some people were offended by that. I understand the offense. I also hope that some people respect that when you have a real relationship somewhere, you don't turn those individuals into a headline uh, because there's peer pressure to do so. Regardless, Kanye West notoriously tweets a man that, by the name of Rabbi Shmuley and his hag daughter have been harassing me. They have made videos after videos, smearing me, libeling me as an anti-Semite, saying that I defend Hitler, that I defend... Just an absolute nonsense. I want to be clear, it's been going on for two years. They watch every minute of the show, take me out of context, and essentially are trying to create hatred between me and the Jewish community, which is just never going to happen. It's, I'm telling you, it's just never going to happen. I have too many Jewish friends... I love Jewish people. They're a part of my story so much in the things that they have done for me since I was a child. You know, I've, I've shared that with you. We don't need to recap that. It's just, it's never going to work, but he won't stop. The threats don't stop. And I showed you guys uh, basically just a small snippet, really just a minute of their harassment over the last two years. And some of you guys were very stunned and shocked and I'm finally defending myself and I feel good about it. Like I'm not pregnant anymore. I'm like, let's go. Like, let's go, Rabbi Shmuley. So he's if you don't know who Shmuley is, and I did show you guys some B-roll footage stuff of him, he recently took off for debating Gent Younger on Pierce Morgan over the topic of Israel, Gaza, which, by the way, isn't really much of a debate to have because Gent, quite frankly, is a bloviating fart bag who doesn't know anything, and he just screams bigot at you the minute you disagree with him. Also, something else, too, is that he's recently debated Gent again, so Shmuley is kind of being elevated up. Now, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time talking about The Daily Wire, but trust me, we'll get to that here in a second because there are some personalities at The Daily Wire that have already found a way to label anything uh, such as Christ is King as suddenly anti-Semitic. Jeremy Boring uh, finally got involved in on this right here, basically wondering what happened in our country when that happened. But dude, I, I got to be honest with you, uh, Jeremy, uh, you in a lot of ways are the orator of what happened here. By the way, this right here, and now that I'm on the topic, echoes another sentiment or echoes another incident involving the Daily Wire that I'm definitely going to talk about once we get to the section about the uh, Andrew Clavin segment and the Michael Knowles segment, which, by the way, people are attacking Knowles, but I'm kind of looking at them saying, look, if anything, I think the attacks or the uh, the discontent with Andrew Clavin is justified, but not the ones on Knowles. I'll explain that a little bit further. But the thing is, this right here, Candace has been going out with this guy for a while. Candace's criticisms of him, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, do not appear to be AS in nature. Now, why is that right there the case? Well, let's watch some more. The very beginning. But buried into this article, I could not believe this. Like, they reached out to him for a comment, and he actually said this. Quote, there can be no question that Candace's serious defamation against me and the Jewish community must be met with a comprehensive lawsuit that will bankrupt her. Bankrupt her. He wants to bankrupt me for defending myself against him and his hag daughter, right? Why do I call him an unholy rabbi? Because who does that? It's one thing to say, like, I want to sue somebody. It's another thing to say that I want to bankrupt that person. He constantly makes these sorts of financial threats. And why should we talk about that? Because if I or somebody else said, oh, you know, Jewish people always try to come after people in the means of money. Of course, Candace would have another rabbi on, and of course, she would, in fact, debate him over the same exact topic that she was discussing, except she, of course, brought things back a little bit further, closer to home when she brought the guys past. Let's go ahead and roll this. Your children all that better than that. No, I, I actually, full, like, everything I'm saying about him, like, I, if this is holy, like, you know, selling butt plugs with your daughter, I, I don't know, okay, maybe wait, you, wait. you're right. I think it's gross. Right, I think so, it's disgusting, so, and I do not... It's not the definition of holy in the Christian faith, is what I would say. It's weird to me. Well, okay. It's very weird. And, and this could be a difference in our religions. But by the way, your religion does not trump my religion. So I think that you should respect the fact when I say something is unholy, I am referring to my religion. Every His relationship between him and his daughter is very creepy to me. The sex podcast is very creepy to me. The idea of sitting down and talking to your father about you know, topics of sex in any regard is creepy to me. Him promoting butt plugs that are sold by his daughter is creepy to me. I have a right to say that I find this to be utterly unholy and that any faith leader, at least in the Christian community, would agree that all of this is giving us very weird vibes between the father and daughter relationship. I can say that all I want. And I, and I, I do think that part of it, and this is where we get to the topic of 
where people perceive this and they say, is this a form of Jew supremacy to say, suspend your Christianity because my, my Judaism matters more is the feeling that I get when you say, you don't get to say it's an unholy rabbi. rabbi. Pornography, okay, you know what, pornography is, is unholy in my view. Uh, you might disagree okay, with that. Candace. It's unholy to, to, to Christians, the topic of pornography, peddling pornography, selling butt plugs, you know, the commercialization of pornography is unholy. And I'm going to continue to call him unholy because that is what I deem him to be. And I say that as a Christian. I don't see how it is that she calling the guy's daughter a hag is AS. I don't see how it's anti-Semitic at all. I really and truly don't see it. I just don't. I mean, she was attacking the girl basically based on the merit that she peddles a certain product that's not exactly good for our society, and it's a big reason why it is that our society uh, is in such the bad shape that it is. So I don't see how in the world that this right here is the case. I don't see how in the world this right here is anti-Semitic at all. Now, Grant, you two may come back and say that you violated terms of services with this video, but of course, I'm more than halfway in. I've been working on this video for two straight days, and quite frankly, I'm at the point of no return. And honestly, to tell you the truth, I really actually don't care. There's a lot of things you can criticize Candace Owens over, but I don't think this is one of them. You could look at her and you could say she was wrong when it came to Kanye. You could look at her and say she was wrong when it came to Kyrie Irving. By the way, the Daily Wire told her she was not allowed to talk to Kanye West anymore. Moving on. And there is one thing I do want to go ahead and clear up really quick. The video that I'm putting in the description box from the officer, Brandon Tatum, he has more of a direct line to Candace Owens. And according to her, the situation was a lot more mutual than you think. By the way, there's also been a recent set of attacks or a recent inquiry into Bridget Macron the wife of French President Emmanuel Macron. And of course, Candace has looked into that there, basically saying that she believes that she's a transesis, which does seem kind of odd. But then again, at the same time, we haven't seen no evidence or real proof of that. We just have a lot of speculation. So I'm not going to go too further into that there. Maybe what happened in this case was once the ADL father was started looking into the situation, the Daily Wire more than likely got scared and said, look, she's got to go. We got to get rid of her. But still, as I've said before, it was probably going to happen a long time ago. It just so happens to be that it happened now. And of course, after Candace went on and had a conversation with Tucker Carlson over the last spat that she had with Ben Shapiro, she revealed that uh, the Daily Wire was a lot more America first now, or at least it was being controlled more by America first people and that Ben Shapiro did not have the influence that people thought he had. But still at the same time, I'm pretty sure the reason why it is that she got fired from this company or they eventually said, we want her out of here is because of the three-letter agency, not the CIA, not the FBI, but then again, they could have been involved for all we damn it on. Uh, what ended up happening was that these people obviously started to look into this and want somebody of some type of note in a certain community decide to say something, next thing you know. And by the way, I didn't play for you guys what he was saying, Rabbi Shmuley. The reason why I didn't play it was because the things that Rabbi Shmuley says in his rants, which by the way, he did a lot of those Twitter rants the other night, these are the types of things that would get me removed from Twitter. I mean, excuse me, from, from YouTube. Okay. And obviously I'm Christian evangelical, not Jewish at all. This guy here obviously is Jewish. And of course, the things he was saying was actually far more anti-Semitic than anything Candace Owens. By the way, there's already hit pieces out there on Candace Owens from CNN written by Oliver Darcy, of all people, one of the worst human beings in existence. And also not only Oliver Darcy, but also the New York Post is now getting in on this with things that quite frankly have already been communicated and fact-checked and proven to in fact be false. But then you get to the situation where you've got members of the Daily Wire saying that Christ is King is now suddenly anti-Semitic. Now guys, I'm going to play these two, these two responses back to back. I want to get you guys' opinion on what you think in the, in the comment section. I'm definitely going to provide some commentary. But I want to play them back to back. Let's start with Andrew Clavin. You know, when I did this, by the way, the priest who baptized me said, you know, Christians won't accept you. They'll, you'll still be a Jew. And I said, well, I am. A, that's my race. I'm a Jew. I'm proud of my race. It's a, it's a great race. It's done many, many great things, including write the Bible. And, you know, I am a Jew. But that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms, except this Christ the King, anti-Semitic crowd. Christ is the King. And one day, every knee will bow and recognize it because he's not just my king, he's king of the universe. But when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews, you are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. You are quoting scripture to your- Okay, there's a lot that quite, and by the way, it was a lot worse, okay? I'll try to leave the full episode in the description box for you guys. It was a lot worse. 
Andrew went out of his way to attack Candace on the way out the door. Now, a lot of people are attacking Michael Knowles because Michael Knowles did not defend Candace Owens. But let me show you Michael Knowles' response to this entire situation. And you tell me if this right here is a man that, quite frankly, is just simply reacting, responding, and doesn't really have much of a choice in the matter. No, an hour or two before the show started uh, this morning. Uh, so Candace has parted ways with the Daily Wire. I, I, I forget how exactly they phrased it. The the I think Jeremy announced it on his Twitter and said the Daily Wire and Candace have ended their relationship. Uh, so... I don't have some grand statement to make about that. I don't think it's my place as a host on this network to make some grand statement about it. Uh, you, you know, because this is a very personal business and a personal company, a particularly personal company, uh, you, you know the relationships already. You know that I am uh, a close personal friend of Candace and the godfather to her daughter. Her husband, George, is one of my best friends. Uh, and you know that I've been at the Daily Wire for a very long time, since the very early days. You know, Jeremy Boring is one of my best friends. Even Ben, even Ben, I'm willing to admit, in a moment of candor, is a, a longtime friend of mine, uh, as are Caleb and all the other people around here. So, uh, you know, always unfortunate when people go their separate ways, and uh, that's, that's life, I suppose. Uh, but that's really all I have to say about it. You know, people who are attacking Michael Knowles for not defending Candace obviously did not seem to understand what Michael Knowles was doing, was just putting out a uh, statement, which, by the way, was a reaction. He wished her the best. He wished her well. That's normally what happens when you let go of an employee. You normally let said employee walk out the door and not worry about anything. Now, I'm going to go back in time really quick, and I promise you I won't be but a second on this. But uh, this guy in particular never worked for the Daily Wire. But I want you guys to run back and think about this. You guys remember the Steven Crowder situation? By the way, all the videos that I made on Crowder, that situation, I stand by them 100%. I was very, very much pro-Crowder that situation. I did not condone, obviously, the phone call being released. I did talk about that in the last video that I made on the situation. And, of course, uh, those videos were very, very long. And I even took note of the fact that Candace Owens was being used as the primary attack dog attacking Steven Crowder of the situation, even though Crowder was never an employee. But Crowder warned us that Con Inc. was bad. Crowder warned us that at the end of the day, they were going to choose Big Tech. Well, once again, as you guys can obviously see, uh, Big Tech is in fact being chosen once again, this time over Candace Owens. There they were, the ones who really screwed things up. And now you got Andrew Clavin out here, who, by the way, does promote a bit of a woke form of Christianity. Uh, Clay, Clavin has lost me. He lost me a long time ago. He's really lost me since. I can barely stand to even listen to him anymore. The thing is this right here. Christ is King is now viewed as anti-Semitic, and the Daily Wire is saying it. Well, the truth be told is this here. The Daily Wire doesn't have any Christians. Okay, and I understand this, 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 this statement is going to be very, very controversial, but bear with me really quick. I am Christian evangelical. My roots were actually Baptist. It's the exact same way my conservatism was neoconservatism. After a while, I migrated to Church of God, and then eventually I migrated over to Methodist, and that's basically what I am. Knowles and Walsh are both Catholic. Not trying to make fun of Catholics. I'm not doing that at all. I'm pretty sure I have uh, Catholics in my audience, of course. Say, look, you know, it's just the way it is. Things are a little bit different over there on that side of the aisle, the exact same way it is with different den denominations. I'm not going to get too far into that, not because I don't want to alienate you or anything, but because I really and truly don't fully know, okay? I'm just saying that things are obviously done a little bit differently. Shapiro, by the way, is Jewish. And Jordan Peterson claims to be a Christian apologist, but I don't know what the hell Christian apology is. I don't know if that's even a religion, Okay. The thing is this, and Candace, of course, she claims to be Christian, but it seems to me that Candace, a lot of her takes when it came to the topic of Israel were coming more so from a point of not really knowing, which is exactly what we're going to be segueing into right now, because I hate to say this, but possibly the biggest grifter on the conservative side, Dave Rubin, actually got this correct. I would say just on, on Israel specifically, what I've heard her say, she seems largely confused about a bunch of issues, and I hope that she will talk to people who know a little bit more about some of this stuff than she is. You know, there was a video where she was talking about the Muslim quarter in the old city of Jerusalem, the implication being that, Jew, that Israel keeps all of the Muslims in one quarter. And it's like the Muslim quarter, which has existed from the British Empire to the Ottoman Empire, mm -hmm. to we can go back and back to the old temple in Jerusalem. Uh, Israel, which there is no apartheid, where 20% of the population are Israeli Arabs, most of whom are Muslim, uh, and are, some of whom are on the Supreme Court and the rest of it. I think she's a little confused about some of the things. 
but I think, uh, well, I hope you heard the mm-hmm. overriding part, which is that I don't want to make it personal with her. I don't really consider us friends anymore. Um, but that's just like the nature of the reality of the thing that we're all in. You what know do you I think mean? about the dynamics of her and Ben at Daily Wire, where, you know, Ben made those comments at that one event and was recorded and went to the public and, you know, yeah. I don't agree with this. And obviously intentions were high. What, what are your thoughts about that dynamic? I think there's there's many layers to this. Let, let's just remove the Israel layer for a okay. second. There, there's a pure business layer to it, which is that Candace has a contract with Daily Wire. Mm-hmm. I know nothing. I truly know nothing about the nature of the contract or the, how long it lasts or how much it's for or anything else. But it seems fairly obvious to me she wants to leave the Daily Wire. And I would say there's a little bit of the Tucker thing here, too. Which Tucker is building? You think that maybe the Daily Wire could have broke it down for her from a different perspective. You think maybe the Daily Wire could have not only broken it down to her from a different perspective, but broken it down for her from a much, much more historical perspective. I mean, it seems to me like with Ben there, you're obviously going to get the much, much more pro-Israel side from every other perspective. But Jordan Peterson does work there, and he's supposed to be a bit of a historian. Did you think that maybe instead? Which, by the way, Shmuley has proven himself to be. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to violate YouTube's terms of services, but still, the point is this right here. The Daily Wire could have avoided this entire situation if they had actually had voices and people who actually understand the more Christianity perspective and the actual true historical perspective to actually explain to her, which I don't think they did. I think if they had done that, this entire situation would have been avoided, which is another reason why it is that I believe that it's really the Daily Wire's fault that we are even in this situation, and Con Inc., of course, is showing you who the hell they are. By the way, a part of Con Inc. is Dave Rubin. I mean, he is Ben Shapiro's uh, token gay friend. I really hate agreeing with Dave Rubin, especially given the fact that he himself also cut his relationship off with Candace over the tweets involving Ramaswamy and, of course, the Free Palestine stuff and, of course, defending the students uh, that were protesting Israel. And, by the way, we have to deal with this crazy mess. I mean, so in a lot of ways, you can kind of see why it is that people out there probably uh, would take the Daily Wire side on this, even though obviously the online world is not. Me personally, I think that the reason why the Daily Wire looks bad in this situation is because of how they're treating her out the door. This, in a lot of ways, echoes the Steven Crowder situation. They attacked him on the way out the door, even though he had never signed a contract with them, and come to find out what Steven Crowder was saying then turned out to be correct now. Con Inc. obviously will choose Big Tech over you, the person who works for them. Fact of the matter is that Daily Wire looks like a bunch of crap right now. There's obviously a lot of things that could be said there, but the thing is this right here. When I brought up each person's religion, the reason why I brought that up was to kind of give you guys an idea that, hey, look, uh, this right here is probably the reason why Candace doesn't really know anything because she's getting different perspectives on the topic of the Israel-Palestine situation. In a lot of ways, she's just going off what she naturally thinks, which is this needs to be America first. We need to stop sending money over, even though we haven't put any troops on the ground. And as I said before, I think this entire situation, how the U.S. should really handle this is by just simply having a fleet out there in the middle of the Mediterranean to keep third parties from getting involved. I think it's a pretty daggone simple way of handling this entire situation, especially seeing how it is that we've always been an ally and they've always been an ally. Well, I wouldn't say ally to us, but they've definitely given us intelligence and stuff like that and other engagements. So I always always considered them to be one of some of an ally, especially me being military and all. The fact of the matter is that Daily Wire could have handled the situation a lot better. And I understand that once the ADL got involved, they obviously decided to put their heads between your legs and take the hell off and running. That was what the Daily Wire ended up doing. And of course, how they look at this moment in time as a company going forward probably tells people that uh, you probably don't want to work for the Daily Wire regardless of how much money they decide to pay you going forward. Because if they're going to attack you on the way out the door, then what the hell else will they do behind closed doors? Which brings me back to the whole free Palestine crowd. These people are screaming for a six-week ceasefire. Here's an idea. Here's an idea. You want the Palestinian people to be okay. You want them to be good, right? You want the quote-unquote genocide to stop, right? How about this right here? Why don't you encourage the Palestinian people to get the Hamas elements, the pro-Hamas elements, and turn them over to Israel or turn them over to the U.S. or whatever. And then once that's over with, establish a peace treaty so that way the situation does not occur again. By the way, the Palestinians, they're the ones who threw the first rock. Okay, October the 7th, I don't think I have to go through all that again. And I'm not calling for genocide or anything like that. I'm not doing that at all. However, when I hear somebody say finish the job, I'd like to see them obviously finish it up so that way we ain't got to worry about this anymore. The fact of the matter is there is a peaceful resolution. It's the Palestinians who are refusing to seek a peaceful resolution. 
you're calling for a six-week ceasefire. A ceasefire is not a treaty. By the way, what are you going to do when the six weeks are up? Are you going to attack again? So at this moment in time, when you see that BB Netanyahu is saying we're not going to stop, and yet you see the U.S., the United States of America, uh, criticize uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and suddenly call for a special election like Chuck Schumer did about a week ago, obviously this right here is a problem. And of course, the Biden voter base is beginning to get smaller and smaller and smaller because the uh, identity politics crowd is starting to move. Well, part of that identity politics crowd is, in fact, Muslim voters, and they're refusing to vote or support Joe Biden. That's probably the biggest reason why is that Trump will probably end up winning because it's beyond the uh, margin, which is, by the way, very funny, especially given the fact that Ben Shapiro recently announced that he is, in fact, doing a fundraiser for former President Trump. But speaking of that, so what happens going forward? Well, you've got Mark Dice out here and a lot of others who are calling for a Bud Light-style boycott on the Daily Wire. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to do that. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. I'm going to have the exact same. Well, in the case of Planet Fitness, I said go right ahead. In the case of Bud Light, go right ahead. The Daily Wire, I'm going to say the exact same thing. If you want to do it, that right there is completely up to you. Go right ahead and do it. But I want to go ahead and say this right now before I go any further. The Daily Wire's audience more than likely is already extremely pro-Israel and probably wanted Candace gone. So I don't think a boycott in this matter will work. However, if you're going to boycott them over anything, what I think you should really boycott them over is you should boycott them over the fact that they've been hitting Candace on the way out the door the exact same way after that whole situation with crowd, which, by the way, some of the stuff that they did, they said, was, in fact, justified. Stephen should not have released that, uh, should not have released that phone call. But if you really and truly sit back and think on, if you remember Jeremy Boring's response to Crowder, and I know I'm going a little bit in a different direction here, I don't mean to, if you actually listen to that conversation, if you actually listen to what was said before the conversation was leaked, Jeremy Boring seemed to hit Stephen Crowder right in the balls, right there at the very end when he said, you know, Stephen's a very, very talented guy, he's a very, very bright guy, but I don't think he can run a business on his own, I don't think he'll survive on his own. Very, very smug coming out of Jeremy Boring. It's another reason why it is that I personally don't care for the Daily Wire. Outside of what is a woman, what the hell are they really and truly good for? What happens to Candace? Well, Candace started her website, and of course, Candace is going to be getting donations, the locals. Of course, Candace is not going to be hurting for money because she's married to an heir to a, to a, to a precious, metal tie, uh, precious metal company. I don't think Candace is going to be hurting for money. She'll probably take a break, like she said she was going to, and she'll probably disappear for a while and then probably come back sometime over the summer. Uh, something else, too, and this right here needs to be said, and I forgot to mention this earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it now. Candace Owens got in some trouble when she was at PragerU over something similar to this. Dennis Prager just simply had a conversation with her and asked for an apology, and she gave it to him, and he wasn't salty or anything about it. Prager didn't attack her on the way out the door, and I highly doubt Dennis Prager's going to do it now. Seems to me like Prager's response, seeing how it was that he was Jewish, still is, seemed a lot more reasonable as opposed to the Daily Wire just saying, you know, we're done with your contract. But, of course, Candace Owens is saying that it was a little bit more mutual. But the thing is this right here. We all know that it was a long time coming, and I think that once the ADL, the three-letter agency, finally began to start rearing their ugly head, I think that the Daily Wire basically just uh, cowered, and they figured just to kind of clamp down on things, they would attack her on the way out the door. By the way, that Andrew Clavin segment was pretty daggone bad, and I could have waited for Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro's segment to come out to uh, put that in the video, which, like I said, I may still come back on Wednesday and talk about. The point of the matter is, is that we need to be uniting right now and not tearing one another down. With that right there being said, guys, please leave a comment in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys have got to say. Please tell me what you think. Nothing is off limits. Um, with that right there being said, please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sound off in the comment section, and I'll have some content out on Tuesday. This video is going to come out tonight. And there's probably going to be an updated version to this video or a bit of a response after Matt Walsh and uh, Shapiro finally make remarks because I have a feeling this entire situation it doesn't look like it's going to be bad, but then again, at the same time, it could get a lot worse. And obviously, people are losing a lot of respect for that company. With that right there being said, see you guys later.